What's going on everyone? I don't think in the eight years that I've been doing trail recon, there has been a more requested video than the one we're doing here today, which one, that's crazy to think that I've been doing this for almost eight years. And two, it's a little bit of pressure because I wanna make sure that I cover all this information. We're gonna be talking about the nine vehicles, the off-road vehicles that I have sold over the years, kind of why I sold them and do I regret selling them? Would I buy them again? It's been a lot of fun and I, and I think, and it is fun. I, for me, I enjoy like having new vehicles and trying new things and it's something I've done long before trail recon. I've always been a car guy. Uh, I used to go to car shows with my dad and my grandfather and just love cars and I've always swapped out vehicles over the years and then Doing trail recon has just, I don't know, given me a platform and more excuses to do it a little more often uh, than I normally would. But I just enjoy it. And so vehicles will come and go here on the channel just like some of these ones have. So I'm just gonna dive right in. I can't believe that there's nine. In fact, I was talking to my son Jordan. He's like, I don't know, what is there, five or six? I was like, no, there's nine, that's crazy. Let's start with the first one that we sold. That was the 1999 Jeep Cherokee XJ, and I bought that, I got a, an incredible deal. I think I paid around $2,000 for that Jeep. Um, and this was several years ago. You can't find an XJ for that cheap anymore. And I bought it because my two sons, Justin and Jordan, had just turned 16. They were in high school, they needed a vehicle, and I thought it'd be a fun, good, fun father and son project. And it was, it was incredible. Uh, we made some awesome memories, just turning wrenches here in the garage. Actually, it was at our other house. Uh, and, and taking that thing out on the trail and uh, just having a lot of fun with that vehicle. And I know a lot of you guys actually built kind of an emotional attachment to that vehicle. So did we, actually. And we kept that thing for a long time. Um, it ended up, Jordan joined the military, and so he was off doing his thing, and Justin was going to school full time, and so that became kind of his daily driver. And it had over 200,000 miles. I think we were, I don't know, maybe 220,000 miles. That had a lot of miles on it. Not a lot of miles in perspective of the four liter motor in there, because those things are a tractor motor and they will run forever. The problem is with having that many miles on a XJ, is while the motor runs well, everything else around it starts to fall apart. And so we were constantly, you know, we had the transmission rebuilt, you know, starters, alternators. It just seemed like every time we turned around, we were fixing something and it became very unreliable for him. You know, he was a young man, he was going to school, going to work, and uh, it just wasn't working for him. Plus the fuel economy was terrible once we lifted it, put bigger tires on it, and so, it sat for a while. We got him another car and it just sat and sat and sat and nobody was driving it and it was kind of sad that it just wasn't getting used and uh, we ended up selling it and we actually sold it to somebody that lives just down the street. So I see it all the time and, and I hope that if they ever decide to sell it, uh, a great gentleman and his family that bought it, that they, they give us a call first because I think we would buy it back. So I, I, I don't want to say we regret selling it because if we still had it, it would probably just barely get used, but there's a lot of memories in that Jeep. And so for me, if I had the space, like I would just tuck that away somewhere and keep it forever. Uh, but at, at the time selling it just made a lot of sense. So would I buy another XJ? Yeah, I would, I think it'd be fun. Maybe it could be mine this time, but uh, no, no plans to do that right now. XJs are not cheap and they're still pretty hard to find in good condition. So, all right, the next, the next Jeep, this one was kind of a flash in the pan on the channel, and that was my oldest son, Devin's 1999 Jeep Grand Cherokee WJ. And originally we bought that, we did a whole, uh, I should say we, I did a whole walk around video talking about it, and we kind of had some plans to use it, but it was gonna be his daily driver. So he had just started college here locally, and he was gonna use that to go back and forth to school, to work. And we thought, you know, we do a few things and we ended up not doing a lot. He got really busy. He had a girlfriend and life just, you know, when you're a young man, life just gets ahead of you. And uh, he kind of started forgetting about dear old dad. That's changed obviously since then. But 
we didn't end up, I think we put a, a little spacer lift on it, some bigger tires, and we didn't do anything else with it. We didn't do any big trips with it or anything. And I kind of regret that because I think the Grand Cherokee, the WJ platform is so underrated. You know, everybody gravitates to the XJs because they're that boxy look, but the 99 Grand Cherokee, it's a great vehicle. And, it, and, and I know it says Grand Cherokee, but it's really not that big, especially if you compare it to something like this. Uh, it's, it's a good size vehicle for off-roading and overlanding, and the 99 had solid axles in the front. And so there's a lot of potential there to build those up, and you can find those so much cheaper than you can an XJ. And so I think if you're looking for maybe a budget-friendly build, a Grand Cherokee WJ is, uh, is worth taking a look at. Now, uh, that one also had a lot of miles on it, and it did not be, <laughs> was not very reliable. And so we sold that uh, after he moved up to, uh, to go get his master's degree. Uh, I don't think we regret selling that. And I don't know if I would ever do a Grand Cherokee again, but, uh, but I think it's a good platform. Uh, okay. Who remembers Amelia? The 2019 Jeep Gladiator that I bought. Man, that was such an exciting time. I was fortunate enough to be one of the first folks to get my hands on a Gladiator and start building it. And it was so much fun. I was so excited about that truck. I remember, you know, off-roading it just stock and then uh, just taking it on so many incredible adventures. The problem with buying a brand new vehicle like that, that's a first model, uh, is there was no aftermarket support. And it, was, it took a while um, for Gladiator aftermarket companies to really start coming out with stuff. If you remember in 2019, they was very limited on you know, what you could do the truck bed and, and suspension kits and a lot of the other stuff. Now it's, there's you know, almost as much stuff for a Gladiator as there is a Wrangler, but there wasn't in 2019. And so I kind of just did what I could with what was available at the time. And, and it turned out well. Uh, I think looking back, I would definitely do it differently. Uh, but I had a lot of fun with that Gladiator. And that thing was an awesome truck. And, and the wrap we did on it was just beautiful. I did that wrap and we took it to SEMA and displayed it on, at SEMA. And it was just, oh, I, I love, love the Gladiator. In fact, I had zero issues with that vehicle on all the adventures we took it on nothing ever ever went wrong uh, with that truck it's such a good platform so the question is why did i sell it well i kicked myself a little bit because i kind of wish i had not um you know i i i, I will probably own another gladiator uh in the future I want them to do some, maybe an update to it like they're doing for the 2024 Wrangler. If they do something like that with the Gladiator and maybe a new engine, uh, I might be all in. The only challenge is I gotta figure out what's gonna go because I can't add any more vehicles. I just don't have the space. But I, at the time, I thought, you know, I have a Wrangler, I have a Gladiator. Most of the time, uh, I wanted to just take the Wrangler because if I was gonna go get Titan Technical or I was gonna get in the thick of it, it's just a good platform. You can build the Gladiator to do a lot of the stuff the Wrangler can, but you can't get over the breakover angle and the departure angle. Those are still challenges. But as an overland vehicle, it's an incredible, incredible truck. And towing a trailer, uh, which we tow a lot, uh, I think that's a good platform to tow with. And so I think, you know, I think down the road, I'd, I would own a Gladiator again, for sure. I, I've talked about it a lot. My wife she hears me talking about it. She's like, you're not getting anything right now. And I'm like, you're not, you're right. Not right now, but I think down the road. I love the Gladiator and I, and, and I regret selling it. I wish I could have kept that, um, but, but I've just moved on to other vehicles. Next, the Jeep Wrangler 2006 TJ. So I mentioned that Jordan went off to the military. Uh, he was on deployment in Japan for, and he's over there for three years. And before he left, he was driving my Jeep Wrangler JK for a while. And then, uh, that, I don't know, maybe six or eight months he was driving that. And then he deployed, came home, and he was like, I want a Jeep. And so uh, we got him a 2006 Jeep Wrangler TJ Rubicon. And that thing was a, such a beauty. Uh, I believe it only had just over 80,000 miles on it. So again, that was a four liter engine. And that thing, it ran really nice. And we had a lot of conversations, he and I, about how to build that and how not to build that. And he had it in his mind that he just wanted to build this thing up really quick. And so I tried to slow him down a little bit. I'm like, just enjoy it as it is for a while. But 
you know, when you're young, you just want to put the bigger tires on, the new rims, roof rack, rooftop tent, you build it out, and you just wanted to do all the things all at once. And he's a little bit like me, uh, let's be honest. Uh, I enjoy doing that kind of stuff, but I was trying to rein him in a little bit because it was his daily driver, and he was driving really far. Uh, it's like a 45 minute drive to and from base uh, with that. And as we lifted it and put bigger tires on it, obviously the fuel economy went down. And then he, we put that roof rack on and he wanted a rooftop tent and that made it even worse and it didn't handle great. We just didn't have it dialed in very well. Plus he had a soft top and it was a manual and so he just wasn't happy driving that. And I think if he would have left it a little more stock, it probably would have been better long term. But that thing, that thing was a gem. Uh, and we, we still had a lot of fun building it. Uh, we did take it on several trail adventures. He took it on some trail adventures on his own. Uh, it was a great little Jeep. I think, uh, I don't think we regret selling it. I think we regret building it and, and not keeping it stock because if I think if we would have kept it stock or at least a little close to stock, uh, we would have kept it. It's hard to find a TJ Rubicon in good condition. Um, I, I've always been on the hunt for an LJ Rubicon. Uh, one of these days, I, I would love to have one of those. They're just so expensive anymore. Uh, to find one that's in good condition, uh, you're going to pay a heavy premium for it. And again, I mentioned that space is a commodity at my house. And so I don't know if I'll ever have one of those. Next, the 1974 Jeep Cherokee Chief. Oh. Uh, I was so happy to find that Cherokee Chief because I had been looking for a while. I mentioned growing up, I was, I've was i been a car guy forever. Uh, before doing Trail Recon, I've had a couple classic cars and I just, I just love them. Uh, you have to know what you're getting into when you get a classic car. I mean, unless you can afford to buy something that's been completely restored, you know that going in, you know, it, there's probably gonna be a lot of work that you're gonna do and a lot of maintenance. And that was definitely the case, although I will say, that it was not as much work as Project Prickly Pear sitting here behind me. Uh, this has definitely been a lot more work uh, than the 79 ever was. It was a wide body. Uh, it had 33s at a lift on there. We took it off road. It was beautiful. Uh, the problem was that it was a 79. And so because I'm here in California where you need to smog your vehicles from anything that's 1976 and on, has to get smogged and that was a 79 and I, there was all the emissions had been ripped off of it. And there are, yes, there are ways to kind of game the system where you can get it smogged, but I, I'm not interested in doing that. And so I wasn't able to get it smogged. Uh, it still had the big rust on the roof and I got a couple of quotes to get that fixed and it was not gonna be cheap. And the problem is, is that roof is contoured and it's not like just doing a body panel. So, I, I said goodbye to it and I sold it to a gentleman up in the uh, Northeast and he was a auto buddy guy, retired auto buddy guy and he was gonna not have to worry about smog and it, he was gonna make that, I'm sure it looks beautiful by now. Uh, I don't regret selling it because uh, after selling it, I took the money and I was on the hunt for another one and I was fortunate enough to find this 74 just a few months later. And I say fortunate enough, I know that I've gone through trials and tribulations with this thing, uh, but I, I love it. And I got to tell you, I drove home yesterday with, uh, with some new stuff on there and I was smiling ear to ear. This thing, we're this close guys to taking this thing out on the trail. This whole uh, weekend I'm going to be in the garage working on this thing and I will give you guys an update on that. But that's not what this video is about. So we will talk about the Cherokee Project Prickly Pear another time. All right, four more vehicles to go. But before I do, I want to invite you guys to go over and check us out and join us on our Patreon account. We've got all kinds of exclusive content that I'm going to be posting over there, extended content, stuff that you know, I film a lot of stuff and I don't always post it on YouTube. I'm gonna post some of that stuff over there. We're gonna do some behind the scenes stuff, uh, you know, just kind of for a little bit of fun. We're gonna do some live calls with just our patrons and we have a patch that's gonna be exclusive for those folks. And plus, more importantly, you guys are gonna help support us for some of our upcoming adventures. So I would really appreciate it if you headed over to Patreon, you helped support the channel. It would mean a lot to both Regina and my sons and I. Uh, I hope you'll be go check it out because there's going to be some great content coming over there. I will leave a link down below. Okay. All right. The next one, my 2021 
Was it a 21 or was it a 20? I think it was a 21. Uh, Jeep Wrangler Rubicon diesel. Oh, I thought that Jeep was going to be the one that I would keep for a long time. And I mean a long time, like, you know, five years or so. Um, it, it didn't work out. But I built that thing up uh, to exactly, exactly how I wanted it. And it was perfect on, on the adventures we were taking it on. We tow the trailer. It got incredible fuel economy. It had everything I wanted on a Wrangler. Um, the only challenge was... Anytime we would go up any passes, and I'm talking like, you know, steep passes in high altitude, Colorado, up in the mountains, uh, if I was towing, I would overheat. And the engine would overheat and it would depower the engine and uh, put it in limp mode basically. I couldn't go over like 45 miles an hour. And that happened a lot. Uh, it happened when Regina was with me a few times and there were a couple situations where there'd be like semis passing us and it was just kind of a mess. And we, we, I kind of dug into a little bit to getting it fixed and, and I, I look back now and I think I gave up on it a little too soon. I wasn't the only one that's had problems with overheating on the diesels, uh, but I, I talked to a couple people and they didn't really have any fixes. You know, uh, aftermarket radiators at the time, there was nothing there. But now, you know, I've got my good buddy Jerry uh, that works at Shift Auto Works and, uh, and I'll bet uh, if I had that diesel now, we could probably figure something out. Other than that, I never had any issues uh, with the diesel and I really miss it. I really miss the fuel economy, boy. I'll tell you what, I never wanted for fuel out on the trail that, and towing uh, was incredible with that vehicle. Uh, I really miss it uh, because I, I put a lot of work in that. And, and that uh, was, it was surprised me because I was invited to SEMA with, the, with that Jeep and they actually highlighted that Jeep. It was on, it was on the badge that people were walking around. So you could see the Jeep uh, and the trailer that was on the badge. Uh, a picture that Marco had taken when we were out in Death Valley. They put it on one of the covers of the magazine. Um, I love, love that, uh, that Gladiator. Uh, Gladiator, see, I got Gladiator in the mind. I love that diesel. It was a good Jeep. Uh, I had a lot of good adventures with it. And I wish that... Uh, I wish that I would hang on, would have hung on to it and uh, got it sorted sooner. But I didn't. I threw in the towel a little too early. The, the, the shame on me. All right, the next one. Uh, this one I think uh, took folks off guard a little bit, and that was the Jeep Wrangler 4xe Rubicon that I got. It was white, uh, a little the different than the vehicles I'd done in the past, and it was you know electric and. For me, it was exciting uh, to to get behind the wheel of a 4xe electric electrified Jeep. I think it's interesting. I'm a car guy and I love uh, anything new and exciting and gadget. Um, and so the 4xe was an opportunity to try something different and share it with you. I had a lot of fun with it. You know, uh, off-roading in full electric mode, it's completely quiet. You can hear the birds chirping and it's just, it's such a cool experience. And it's got a lot of torque. It's a, it's a good solid Jeep, uh, it's a little heavy, but I didn't really feel that so much on the trail. I didn't do a lot to it. We just put 35s on it and uh, started to kind of off-road with it a little bit, did a little bit of testing with it, but I didn't keep it for very long. And uh, that's, that's not to say that I didn't like it. I actually did like it. In fact, what I really wish is I had one now uh, because the cool thing is it's just about everywhere that I run errands to here locally, I can go back and forth, I could go back and forth in full electric mode. So I wouldn't fill the fuel tank up unless we were going and hitting a trail. And most of the time I was just driving around in 100% electric mode, which is really cool. And, and say what you want about electric vehicles and, you know, the government and the, you know, the infrastructure. There's, there's all kinds of challenges. But for me, I think electric vehicles, electric off-road vehicles are exciting. And I'm excited to maybe own another one in the future. I kind of wish I had one now because I, I would drive that any day over a Tesla or over a, a Mustang Mach-E, which let's be honest, it's, it's not a Mustang. It's just an electric Ford. Um, but I, but I uh, you know, maybe, maybe the Gladiator 4xe if that ever comes out. I mean, uh, when I interviewed Jim uh, at Jeep, he kind of hinted that that is the future. And so maybe I don't know, maybe that's what will get me in a Gladiator. I don't know. I'm not, uh, I'm not making any promises here. But I do regret selling the 4 bike. One vehicle, I'm just going to precursor this, that I don't regret selling, uh, and this is going to probably break some hearts, is the Ford Bronco. Uh, I bought the Ford Bronco, and boy, I remember how excited I was in the beginning. You know, But as soon as that honeymoon phase wore off, 
I, I really fell out of love with the Bronco pretty quick. Uh, it's, a, it's a comfortable vehicle to drive on the road. The, the suspension is nice, the seats are nice, but I got it with the soft top. Horrific. That soft top is straight up awful. I see people driving down the road uh, in their Broncos with the soft top, and all I can think is, man, I'm, dude, I'm so sorry for you. Uh, because one, it looks terrible, and two, I know how loud it is inside. Ford really needs to, needs to fix that, and they need to quit procrastinating. That should be a tight, nice design uh, soft top. And so uh, for me, that was a, a big turnoff. And two, it was just some of the plastics in there were just really cheap. The other thing is, is you know, I had the choice between taking a Wrangler out on the trail or the Bronco out on the trail. And, I, and look, I put the Bronco through some good technical stuff and just never had the same kind of confidence in that vehicle that I've always had in the Wrangler. And so when I was choosing which vehicle to take, well, the Bronco pretty much sat and I would take the Wrangler. And that happened time and time and time again. And Regina was like, you know, maybe it's time to just say goodbye to the Bronco because you don't enjoy driving it. You don't enjoy taking it out on the trails. And she was right. So we sold it and, uh, and I don't regret it. That was the, that was the right decision. Um, and I don't know that I would go buy another Bronco, uh, not anytime soon. I mean, they would have to make a pretty, pretty big transformation to that vehicle. I think honestly, if I wanted to do something that was an SUV like that, that has, you know, front independent suspension is a little more comfortable. You know, I, I'm, a, I'm thinking Forerunner is probably the better option. And I, and I probably wouldn't have said that, uh, before the Bronco, before I owned the Bronco, before it came out, I was like, oh man, the Bronco is going to be like a forerunner killer. And I don't think that's the case at all. Uh, I, I think, I think, uh, updated, you know, they just did the update on the Tacoma. I got to see that at Overland Expo. It's pretty cool. I like the, the design of it. The interior looks nice. Uh, I don't think we'll be buying another Tacoma. The, the one we have now is fine. Uh, but if they do that similar update to the forerunner, it's going to be pretty slick. Uh, especially if they do like a trail hunter version, that'll be pretty cool. I, hmm, I, I'd think about that. Okay. Uh, this one, this one makes me sad to talk about, but this is number nine guys. We are at the end of the road here. <sighs> the Ram power wagon. So we did sell the Ram power wagon last year and going, just rewinding, you know, when I bought the Ram power wagon, I was super excited to have another truck because we let the gladiator go and moved into the power wagon. Uh, having a truck is very nice just for general utility every day. And the power wagon is such a great truck. It's so comfortable inside and it's so capable on the trail. You're just big and you have to, you have to get over that. It took me a little while to kind of adapt to that, but, but it is a great truck right out of the box. It's an awesome truck. I think we put 35s on there and wheeled it like that. And then we started lifting it, making modifications to it. And it was awesome. I, I really had some good adventures with that. You know, we took that all the way up to Idaho and Montana towing the trailer. It was just, it's a, Good, good truck. We put the four-wheel camper in there and you will read the owner's manual in a power wagon. They'll tell you, don't do that. Don't put a camper in there. I think to do it again, the best thing we would do to just do like a Project M or some kind of topper camper. But we put a full-blown camper in there and, and I did that because I wanted Regina to really have some creature comforts when we went out. And, and you know, now looking back, we realized we didn't need all that. But putting all that weight in the back of the power wagon um, was not good for that truck. I ended up having to, we put different spring, you know, we, this, we actually swapped out springs, I think three different times to try to get it to work. That still didn't do a good enough job. I think, I think we had put 3,500 uh, Ram truck springs in there, but it still didn't work. I had to put airbags in there. I had to put uh, a stiffer sway bar in there. Uh, a lot of work uh, to try to manage the camper in the back of there. And, and really, if you're going to put a camper in the back of the truck, the power wagon is not the one to do it. Go get a heavy duty 2,500 or heavy uh, duty 3,500. Those, that's the way to go with that. And, and if I knew that I was going to put the camper in there, that's exactly what I would have done. But I think the power wagon itself is an incredible truck. Now, the four wheel camper was awesome. We just found that we just, Regina likes to cook outside. So having the trailer, uh, being part of camp instead of tucked away somewhere, uh, we just enjoy that a little more. I, I think there's a lot of benefits though, in having something enclosed like that, you know, you, cause you can get out of the weather a little bit. Um, yeah, 
we, we loved the Power Wagon. Uh, we did have some great adventures with the Power Wagon and the, uh, the camper on there. And I think there's a place for that. You know, you're oversized, so you need to know that you need to, you know, you need to go somewhere where you're not too technical. But uh, I don't know. I, I kind of miss having a full-size truck because there's such a good utility th uh, thing to have. Uh, for towing and for just hauling stuff around. I really miss the power wagon. And so, yes, I regret selling the power wagon. So there you have it, guys. There's the nine vehicles that I have sold over the last almost eight years that we've been doing this. And uh, the truth is, there's going to be more vehicles that will probably come and go. I think the Silver JK will always be here, uh, but the others may come and go, um, depending on, you know, kind of how things evolve. I mean, look, you know, you grow in life and we grow and things change. And, you know, when I started this channel, we were doing things a little differently than what we're, how we're doing them today. And, uh, and there will probably be some things that we're doing differently two years or three years or five years from now. If you guys still are watching that, I don't know. That's crazy that we've been doing it this long. And so thank you. Thank you all for uh, following the channel, for supporting us. Honestly, I could not do this without you guys. So thank you very much. Um, and, and I'm so fortunate to be able to share our adventures and the projects here in the garage with you all. It means a lot to me that you guys watch. All right. I think I've rambled enough, guys. I hope uh, I've answered most of your questions, but if not, um, ask them down below and I'll do my best to, uh, to respond. Until next time, we'll see you in the next video.